I'm going to chronologically break down yesterday's uh, officer-involved shooting. The job of the Department of Defense is to keep America safe from our enemies. It is not gain of function. The Burmese army has committed this act of ethnic cleansing against the Rohingya. Um, we believe extraordinary rendition is, is absolutely unacceptable. Double speak is deliberately euphemistic, ambiguous, or obscure language. Hmm, this is one of those definitions that needs its own explanation. Euphemistic means making something unpleasant more acceptable. Ambiguous means it can have more than one meaning, and obscure means difficult to understand. Although the word doublespeak was never actually used by George Orwell, it was inspired by the two terms doublethink and newspeak in his classic dystopian novel 1984. Doublethink involves believing two opposing ideas at the same time, like the slogans from 1984, war is peace and freedom is slavery. Newspeak is a simplified and restricted form of English designed to limit thought and expression. Doublespeak is often used by people in power to conceal injustices, avoid accountability, and minimize pushback. It distorts and undermines meaning instead of conveying it. Doublespeak is all around us every day in many fields such as academia, advertising, government, law, marketing, military, police, and science. Here are five examples of doublespeak. Officer-involved shooting. Officer-involved shooting is police doublespeak for police shot a person. It's an ambiguous way to describe police violence without assigning blame. Here, grammar is used to create doubt and confusion. It's hard to determine a responsible party when an action verb is absent. Officer-involved shooting is a noun phrase that contains no verb. So the listener or reader is left with questions like, did a gun go off by accident? Did someone shoot a police officer? Did a civilian shoot a civilian while a police officer was nearby? English usually uses the subject verb object format in sentences so we know who did the action and who received the action. When clear English like police shoot a person is used, we know that police are the subject or the doers of the action and a person is the object, the recipient of the action. Here it's clear that the police did the shooting and they were the cause of the injury or death. With officer-involved shooting, you can't tell who the subject is. In fact, the term hinders the reader or listener's ability to make a direct causal connection to the harm done. There was a shooting, the police were involved, and often someone died. But the relationship among these concepts is fuzzy. It describes an event alongside the person who did it without connecting the two. Department of Defense. Department of Defense is military doublespeak for Department of War. In fact, from 1789 to 1947, the name of the agency in charge of the U.S. military was War Department. In 1947, it changed to National Military Establishment. Then in 1949, it became what we now know as the euphemistic and ambiguous Department of Defense. While estimates of the number of U.S. military bases around the world vary, they always show that the U.S. has significantly more than any other country. It's also been at war almost continuously since it was founded. At the time of the recording of this video, the U.S. is involved in three wars, none of which are on its own soil. How is it possible that the reason for all of this military conflict is defense? This naming of a government department the exact opposite of what it does is eerily similar to how ministries are named in Orwell's 1984. For example, the Ministry of Peace is in charge of the armed forces and maintaining a perpetual state of war. Gain of function. Gain of function is scientific doublespeak for lab research that makes viruses more contagious, harmful, and deadly. This euphemistic and ambiguous phrase benefits from the positive connotations of the words gain and function. Gain is usually used in a good way, like gain momentum, gain ground, gain access, gain an understanding, net gain, and financial gain. Function just means purpose, job, or the ability to perform an action. 
For someone not familiar with the phrase gain of function, it either conjures up nothing in the mind because it's so vague, or it creates harmless images like a bike being repaired so it works better. In reality, it's a risky and controversial type of research that could result in a pandemic. Ethnic cleansing. Ethnic cleansing is government doublespeak for genocide. The Genocide Convention, which is an international treaty that criminalizes genocide, defines genocide as any of the following acts committed with intent to destroy in whole or in part a national, ethnic, racial, or religious group. As such, killing members of the group, causing serious bodily or mental harm to members of the group, deliberately inflicting on the group conditions of life calculated to bring about its physical destruction in whole or in part, imposing measures intended to prevent births within the group, and forcibly transferring children of the group to another group. Ethnic cleansing is often used euphemistically for actions that should be condemned and prosecuted as genocide. Cleansing, meaning making something thoroughly clean, has a positive connotation. It's often used when talking about skin, a wound, body and mind, or a detox type health regimen. Genocide is a shocking word with legal ramifications, so government officials have a tendency to avoid it. In Manufacturing Consent, Herman and Chomsky found that the five major print media surveyed engage in a similar biased usage, frequently using genocide to describe victimization in the enemy states, but applying the word far less frequently to equally severe victimization carried out by the United States or its allies and clients. Extraordinary Rendition Extraordinary rendition is legal doublespeak for abducting and transporting foreign suspects to another country for torture and interrogation. Here, the positive connotation and most common meaning of each word individually causes confusion. Extraordinary, meaning strange and wonderful, has many positive synonyms like amazing, exceptional, fantastic, incredible, marvelous, outstanding, phenomenal, remarkable, and terrific. The most common definition of rendition is a particular way of performing a song or piece of music. So upon hearing the ambiguous and obscure phrase, extraordinary rendition for the first time, what might come to mind is that someone sang a cover song impressively like this. You are my sunshine, my only sunshine. When in reality, it means this. Terms like these are designed to mislead people and prevent upsetting mental images about cruelty, killing, and death from forming. It's hard to grasp the implications of an ugly truth when it's delivered in a palatable package. Doublespeak, like all language, is always changing, adapting, and evolving. Many doublespeak terms from the past several decades are now rarely used. Public discourse that exposes doublespeak is an effective way to weaken its manipulative power. One indication that a particular doublespeak phrase is losing its potency is when the media, who often just repeats doublespeak, starts to use scare quotes around the term like with these examples from the recent past. Enhanced interrogation, misspoke, war on drugs, and war on terror. What doublespeak have you heard recently? 